my name is Lincoln and I'm a channel for the higher self-consciousness. Uh, since about uh, 2007, I've been creating YouTube videos in which I channel this universal form of intelligence, awareness, and energy. Essentially, I bring through information that helps people to have actual experiences of their own higher self or experiences deeper into their psyche or experiences of other dimensions of reality. So these teachings not only give you information, but more importantly, in my opinion, they actually give you tools and practices that you can work with. And as many of you know, just being around channels or channel beings, you get the energetic benefit as well. So the purpose of my work is really just to give humanity uh, an example of what's possible when we expand ourselves into these greater states of consciousness um, and to help people access them themselves personally. So give us what was your paranormal signature to guide you into that you, you didn't do this all your life so no. so give us the extreme where you're like okay we have to do a 180 here <laughs> um this is what this is telling me so give us a little yeah. of a story yeah sure um well the channeling happened to me so for a long time in my life, until I actually moved to Sedona, which is where I currently live, I didn't even know about channeling. I never came across a book. I didn't know it existed. I had been practicing a simple style of Zen meditation called Shikantanza, which essentially is just sitting in a state of awareness. I would look at my bedroom wall and just practice being in a state of emptiness. So as that was happening, I started noticing changes happening in my own experience, such as how my brain functioned, how my mind functioned. So I noticed that I was channeling school papers and I was channeling answers to test questions in university. I started noticing that I was receiving information. Now for me, I just thought that, well, my mind worked pretty amazing. I didn't really know about these non-physical states of reality and what was possible. Jump forward a few years, I had a lot of different experiences in meditation that really woke me up to the non-physical reality. And then I had someone in Sedona, a man who used to live here before he passed over, and he told me I had all these gifts that essentially I wasn't really using or hadn't awakened yet. And I was on this path of Zen, so I was really no mind, no expression, inner silence, no ego, no desire. I really wasn't going after anything other than pursuing this state of inner silence. So when he told me this, and he said, you know, you can do what I can do, and I thought what he could do was just absolutely amazing, then I started to explore it that night. So I remember being outside, just walking on the street, and like looking up into the sky with all the stars at night, and, and asking the universe some questions. Like, okay, where am I from? <laughs> you know, if we're all from these other planets, where am I from? So I asked, and I got this answer. I was like, huh, okay. And I started asking questions about like where other people I know are from. I started hearing answers. Um, that continued over time with my curiosity of just getting information from this voice that I heard that was distinctly not my own. Fa flash forward or fast forward uh, maybe a year or so, a lot of my friends knew I had this ability to get psychic information for them. They started telling me, Lincoln, you're really good at this. You should start giving this to others. You should start considering becoming a professional at this. I, I didn't think it was that great myself because um, for me it was kind of normal and natural and I remember having conversations with them and saying like why should I do this like can't everybody get answers like isn't this kind of normal and they told me Lincoln like no they can't like people don't just have this ability and for me at that point in time I was kind of disconnected from human life in the sense that I had a lot of gifts my whole life and I thought that this is just how human beings are like I didn't realize how how my consciousness and my experience of life was so different. And it took a few years really for me to understand that. So my friends encouraged me to do this. And one night I sat down with a friend and I said, okay, put it on YouTube, put it on a video. So we put on the camera and I sat in front of it. Now before this time, I would just ask a question and receive an answer and try to remember what I heard and then say it and then go up again and I get some more information, come back down and say it. But this was the first time that it actually wanted to speak through me. So up until that point, I never channeled. I was more of like a receiving information, like a psychic would. And I remember feeling like my voice lit up, like my throat, all this energy started building here. And I remember telling my friend, whoa, I think it wants to talk through me. And it took a few minutes to learn how to 
get that to happen because there's all this like resistance energetically because we're only used to expressing ourselves through our mouth from like the bottom up. We're not really used to letting something else come through our voice. So I recorded it. Uh, the first time I channeled is on YouTube. You can find it as my first video teachings. Uh, decide, okay, if this is going to happen, then I'm just going to put this out to the universe. So I put it up on YouTube and I told the universe, if people want me to do this, then let me know. Like, I'm not going to just do it for myself and my own sense of gratification. Like, I want to be valuable to people. And so if people start gathering or messaging me and telling me that's important, then I'll keep doing it. It took maybe four months, five months or so. And then I got three messages, three emails through YouTube in the same week. And these people all told me they were waiting for me to make some more videos. <laughs> They've watched them multiple times, they loved them, and they wanted more videos. So I considered that my sign from the universe. So while I was doing the 99 days, there were many different initiation type experiences that were happening within me. Uh, one of the most pronounced ones was while I was channeling, I'd be looking directly at the camera lens like I am now, and the entire room around the lens would just become filled with white light. So the higher self was essentially taking me into the dimension of its own existence. So I was experiencing that pure state of energy, that pure awareness, that pure intelligence while I was channeling it. Uh, so it was a really amazing experience. It happened a number of times during that 99 day period. Uh, there were other initiations. I remember when I was uh, doing the, the video on chakras. Maybe it was like the ninth video of the series. It was one of the earlier ones. I was guiding the audience through a chakra meditation that took about an hour to perform. And during that time when I was channeling, it was happening to me at the same time. So the higher self is talking about it and I'm feeling it and I'm having this experience. And one of the most amazing parts is as I'm channeling, I start feeling my crown chakra wake up and it becomes like all these little fingers of light, like something's massaging your head. It was very electric. And I feel this building as I'm going up the chakra system. And then at one point, the crown chakra opens and I feel this fountain of light come out of me. And it shoots out the top of my head and then it cascades down like a water fountain. And then as it's coming down, I feel all the cells of my body start to vibrate with electricity as this energy is coming down. So I'm feeling it coming down around me and I'm also feeling it inside my body. And it's like it washed me from my head to my feet with this ecstatic uh, electrical massage type feeling. Uh, so it was real blissful. I almost lost consciousness completely. I had difficulty staying in the physical reality because it was so strong. Um, so these are some of the things that, you know, I think people experience as well when they watch my teachings because it's really an energetic transmission as well as an information delivery. And I know, you know, you're, uh, you as an audience member, most likely there's certain channels you like or, you know, spiritual teachers like because you can feel their vibration. And so me channeling the higher self gave me the opportunity to be in the vibration of this higher self consciousness, which was just absolutely remarkable for me. So what is this higher self-consciousness, uh, what's the capacity of you as in remote viewing, time travel, councils to connect to, what, what, what do you uh, know you can reach with your module, higher self intersect? Uh, for me, it's really only limited by my own belief system. That's kind of what I learned. So when I first started channeling about 20 years ago, my own belief system was a little more limited and I could notice that the feeling of my psyche was filtering or modifying the amount of information that would come through because sometimes I'd be working with clients and I'd be afraid to say something and I noticed that like I wouldn't speak it or like I'd lose that connection so I really had to teach myself to be non-bias and to admit that I'm just a channel and my job is just to deliver information I don't have to agree with it I don't have to believe it but my job is just to bring it through uh, so in my experience, I can access anything in that state. Um, the degree to which I see it with my mind's eye is based upon my ability to connect. So when I first began this experience, I was just an auditory communicator. I just used sound. At first, the consciousness was above me and I talked through my brain or that area of myself to it. And then the more I worked with it, the more it came inside of me. So I was actually a channel now through my mouth. As I continued doing it, I went through all of these different types of energetic reconfiguration. My psyche became very different as well. So I was definitely being changed. As that change was progressing, then I started to gain more of these abilities like remote viewing, being able to see past, present and future, um, being able to go in different worlds or different civilizations. 
So for me, as I was being changed by constantly channeling nearly every day, all these different abilities awakened within me. Some of them I can also do myself. In fact, most of them I can do myself even when I'm not in a channeled state. A number of years ago I couldn't. But because I channel almost every day and for hours almost every day, but because I keep immersing myself in this higher consciousness and let it be part of me, it evolves my human system. And I've awakened a lot of these abilities. It all just happened naturally. I've never done a course or a workshop or a practice to like open my third eye. I mean, all I did was essentially read a book on Reiki when I was like 18 years old. And that's really the only training I ever had in channeling or energy work or psychic things. I just wanted to be this empty state of consciousness. I just wanted to zen out. And this all just started awakening within me naturally. So uh, what's your take on your state of being when channeling and the psychedelic state? Is there a difference? Uh, definitely a difference. So when I channel, I experience myself going non-physical, but uh, it's more of a, a relationship, it's more of a connection with something greater than me coming into me. Um, in the experience of psychedelics, it's more that I put something into my own system and I go there um, yeah, because this channeling is really like a higher consciousness part of you. You invite it into yourself. You surrender to the will of God, for example, or surrender to your higher self, or surrender to your spiritual guides, whatever it is that you want to connect with, and you feel this relationship happening. With the psychedelics, there is a relationship with the plant or with the chemical, of course, but it's more like your relationship is just choosing to ingest something and then like trying to trust the journey and not, you know, block it with fear or doubt or anything like that. Uh, the higher self channeling taught me how to build this connection consciously. So with plant medicine, it happens to you and you do develop more sensitivity the more you work with the plant medicine, but it's, it's different. In some ways, the plant medicine forces itself upon you but of course you chose to ingest it, it forced itself upon you and you go along for the ride. When you're channeling, you have to maintain connection the whole time. And when you step out of connection, you have to get yourself back into connection. With the plant medicine, it's connected as long as it's running through your biology. Um, where you can go with it, I imagine it's the same. Uh, my experience with plant medicine is rather limited compared with the amount of time and energy I've put into channeling. Um, and I've experienced remarkable things in both states. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I imagine that anything's possible with both of these, that you'll both be able to access those same experiences. So when I looked at plant medicine a number of years ago, what I saw is that essentially it's awakening you to experience non-physical reality. So your, your soul essentially in this three-dimensional matrix has a desire to experience non-physical reality and then you find a material form, a plant or a chemical, that gets you to access that non-physical reality. So your desire creates that in your holographic universe, creates that in your matrix reality. Something appears now to give you that experience because you wanted it. Right? So the plant medicine opens a doorway to non-physical reality. Myself, my doorway was opened with channeling. I didn't know about channeling. I just wanted to experience this non-physical reality. I had read books by Carlos Castaneda and a few other shaman and interdimensional travelers, and I wanted to have that same experience myself. And the universe provided this pathway of the higher self for me. So I think when we have that desire to experience non-physical reality or enlightenment or any of these awakened states, the universe is going to bring to us that which supports that desire. It's really up to us just to choose our desires intelligently and then just to trust the process and go on it with eyes wide open. Right? We have to learn what's happening, participate in what's happening so that we can replicate it and so we can gain the most knowledge from it. So a question. <clears throat> Do you think that uh, channeling is, as a main purpose is, can and will be a higher calling and if that is in the matrix of your doing as in being in service of the planet, is it detrimental for people to resist that? And second uh, question, hopefully you can capture that, how 
do you not get burned out? I hear people complaining about they getting burned out, mm -hmm. you know. Edgar Casey healed uh, nine people a day. How do you do not get burned out? How do you know this is your calling? That is, that is the card, nothing else for you, but that is your purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so first I think it's very important that we all keep an open mind to everything in our realities. We're here to explore infinity. We're all here to bring into form that which we desire to create as the God consciousness that we are. So when we close ourselves off to a possibility, we're really just limiting our own universe and the potential that we have within it. What another person creates in their reality, what they experience, may not be what I desire, but if I can be open-minded and open and emotional energy to them, then I don't block their reality, which means I don't block their experience from my reality. Me not liking something doesn't really prevent another person from doing it, but it does prevent me from experiencing that. And I might benefit from opening my mind and observing ways of life spiritual traditions, spiritual practices that aren't my norm, who knows what it will open up inside of me when I allow more of the universe into me. Um, so I definitely think that people will benefit from exploring channeled teachings. A lot of people who have watched my videos have told me that the information they receive is unlike anything else, or if it is similar, it's communicated in a way that is very helpful and very well explained. Uh, one of the reasons why people like my teachings, in addition to, of course, the high vibration, is that the higher self is very articulate in how it explains things. So it makes complex concepts very easy to understand. Um, myself as a channel, uh, it's definitely a calling. Um, it chose me. My desire was spiritual enlightenment. My desire was to know the truth of what this is. And as part of that journey, I realized I didn't have the answers. So I needed to allow the universe to provide more information to me. I didn't know what I was looking for. I just knew I wanted my goal. And to reach that goal, I trusted the universe would provide me with what I needed. So I received downloads of information. I received vibrational upgrades. I received all sorts of things. And if it felt right, because I'd always go within and check my intuition, then I would participate in that experience. And oftentimes things that I didn't seek out, but that came to me, were some of the most impactful things that changed my life. So um, sometimes people question the channeling modality. So two uh, things that I found uh, that uh, uh, science has shown is that the brain state changes when people go in channel mode. There's a movie called Tune, very important. They show when Bashar goes in, he goes from 7 uh, alpha into 11 hertz. There's a significant change. And it's like a different personality pattern in his brain. Mm -hmm. uh, Ramtha, Jay-Z Knight, the school of Ramtha, she had two different institutions checking that her Gattaca code, as in the genealogy has changed, she was a different being mm. going into Ramtha. So before, I don't know if you ever heard of these confirmations, what was your, and this is what some skeptics want to know, what's your physical, you know, besides, you know, we have parables and metaphors that make sense and mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're pretty general. They, they, they fit a million people that can say, yeah, I agree, I agree. But what was for you a significant confirmation saying, I am spot on with what I'm saying. I couldn't know that person. Either it's a place and time or something about a person. Mm -hmm. Where did you get your confirmation? Um, well, I continue to get confirmation. Um, even with you, Ra, you've yeah. had two instances of confirmation as early as like two days ago. Yeah. Um, but the first time it happened for me, um, now this was before I started channeling. So I was about 21 or 22 years old at the time, and I just learned about manifestation. Now my whole life I always felt I had a relationship with the universe. Call it God, the universal intelligence. I'm not practicing any religion, I just see that everything's part of this divine intelligence. For me it's just, it has to be, you know, it just has to be. Um, so when I started learning about manifestation, I put it out to the universe to manifest something. And I remember at the time I was very much in Zen, so I had no desires. And really I would ask myself, what do I want? And I wouldn't get any response. I was living a simple life, I just wanted this emptiness quality, I didn't really want material things. So I asked a friend, my closest friend at the time, and I said, 
you know, what do you want? And uh, he's like, well, uh, and I said, no, come on, let's do this. I said, all right, well, I want a new car. And I said, okay, let's be specific. Like, what kind of a car? And he, he said, well, I already have a pickup truck, so I'd like a van. I'm like, okay, I'll be more specific than that. And he says, okay, I want a van with uh, under 30,000 miles, and that costs less than $3,500. And I'm thinking like, yeah, right, like how am I going to find a van that has under 30,000 miles and costs less than 3,500? Like, that's not possible. And as you know, we live in a little town of Sedona. There's no really car dealerships here. I think there's one. It might have five cars on the lot. So about a week goes by after I asked the universe to deliver this. And I'm driving on the road and I drive past this parking area and it's really just a gravel lot on the side of the road and in front of a barn. It's not a store or a business or anything like that. And I drive past it and there's this bright yellow van. And I didn't first think anything, I drove past it and then I remembered, oh, I asked to manifest something. I looked in my rearview mirror and I saw a for sale sign on the front windshield. So I turned around, drove back in. I looked at the yellow van and I couldn't believe it. On the sign, the for sale sign, it said it had under 30,000 miles and the price was $3,500. And the best part for me was that the color of the van was bright yellow and that was my friend's favorite color. He would always have a bright yellow shirt or a bright yellow hat on. So I was blown, I blew my mind, and I went into town, I talked to my friend, we got in his car, we drove back here because he wouldn't believe me. And sure enough, we saw the van, I asked him if he wanted to buy it, he didn't really want to buy it but it was confirmation that this universe is a living source of intelligence and it can create things for you in a way that you just can't argue with. So that was my first experience with uh, working with the universal intelligence. And I consider the higher self an aspect of the universal intelligence, like it's my connection to that universal mind. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. It would give me information about the future. Yeah. So it would, usually I want proof, right? I want proof yes. about things. So one time, for example, um, I wanted a bicycle to get around town in Sedona. I already had a car and I wanted a bicycle, be fun, be different, and I liked to exercise. And my higher self, when I asked about it, like, should I get a bicycle, it said no. I kept saying no, and it's like, why? I've lived here for a number of years, like, I want a bicycle. I, it's so practical, I enjoy it, right? So it says, no, you're not going to need it. I didn't know why. Sure enough, me, I wanted a bicycle, so I bought a bicycle. Probably like a week after I bought the bicycle, I learned that I was moving. Not just out of the, the house I was in, but actually out of the town. Uh, the business that I had here, we were going to close it up. We were going to move it to another area a few states away. And where I ended up moving, I took the bike. I never used it. I ended up selling the bike. Um, so that was a little thing. You know, it's kind of easy because I didn't know we were going to move, but the higher self was very clear that we were going to move. I didn't know the right questions to ask it either. I just asked, should I get a bicycle? It said, no, you're not going to use it. I should have asked why. I didn't ask why. I didn't even think about it. I was kind of zen, a little absent-minded at the time. So what brings me to the question, interesting that you, you, you say in this, how, like, your wisdoms, <clears throat> everybody says, yeah, Lincoln Link knows so much, whether he's in, in channel state or out channel state, and, um, I mean, I have my own proof, so um, I go by how you resonate, whatever energy emanates when you talk. So, um, how do you teach, or what is your advice to people that, let's say, they attract friends, and these friends are not according to, I mean, Buddha teaches, you know, don't have an outcome. Do not assume that you can project where this would go but it doesn't work for these people. And ultimately they are responsible for manifesting what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And they're in this loop where they're thinking everybody else is wrong, it's not them. So how do we reach those people that ultimately they are, which we know, you manifesting reality every second with every breath and every thought you have in your subconscious belief system will be the blueprint around you. How do we hack the code to show people there can be a different experience when you believe something different, making a different choice. So what's your advice? Mm. Um, <clears throat> my own experience and my advice is to become more aware just by witnessing things. So the signs are always present in our life. If we start noticing how we think, we'll start seeing the connections with the experiences that are happening to us. 
If we notice what we say, we'll watch how it connects with and lines up with and brings us the experiences we're having in our life. So by becoming more aware, by trying to watch the relationships, the cause and the effect, we're going to see the evidence that was always right under our noses. So my experience is that it's all right here. You don't have to do anything to try to like manifest. You've always been a manifester. You're just maybe too much in your thoughts and too distracted from actually observing cause and effect. Now some people, when they start to wake up in this way and become more present in their realities, they see the connections but then they doubt the connections. We have to learn to just accept what's right in front of us and not go into that doubting mind. Some people say the doubting mind is one of the first like, blocks on the spiritual path, the disease of the doubting mind. We have the evidence right here, but we're not willing to accept it because it's going to change our reality and we're afraid. We're holding on to the old reality because deep in our psychological programming we feel safe. So we've accepted the reality our parents gave us and that made us feel accepted by our parents loved by our parents, and that we can survive biologically because they provide our food and shelter. Then as adults, we subconsciously confirm to the desires and the thoughts and the way of living that society gives to us. So the advertising and the media and the people around us, we conform to all of that because it makes us feel safe, like we can survive in this world. So we go into this doubting mind place out of fear of survival, and sometimes it's very biological, it's very biochemical. But if we want to relate to reality, we have to relate beyond human conditioning, beyond these social norms and these social customs and these familiar patterns. We have to desire to relate to reality as it is. And that desire overpowers this subconscious conditioning. It's like you can either go down with your consciousness and stay in the karmic patterns, or you can go up into higher thinking. And you have to desire to see things as they are and to realize the greater truth that we all are creating our reality. Right? The truth's here. We just have to open our eyes to see it. In my own life, I only read spiritual books for about three and a half years when I was in college. And then I got really clear upon what I wanted and how I could acquire it which is essentially the Zen style of silent meditation. After that, I was just living in awareness. And because I wanted to be with reality as it is, I started to notice all these connections. And I started to really uncover the laws that are creating the form-based reality. So it's kind of interesting that I was pursuing formless reality, essentially wanting to become the silence and the emptiness of space. And it really brought me deeper into the forms themselves. So as I've learned, whenever we expand into one area, we're also going to expand into the other area. That's one reason why I said we shouldn't really shut down other people's realities, even if we don't understand them, because we're actually limiting our own expansion, sometimes different areas of expansion. So um, <clears throat> how would you advise that somebody can acknowledge purposeful manifestation? Uh, uh, Tony Robbins said that um, he said, if you meet a friend and you're holding a conversation, give it purpose. Mm -hmm. Don't be superficially replying to one another. And <clears throat> when you give purpose to things in life, then life makes more sense. Like you with your bike, and it wasn't a purposeful manifestation. Like I can say I want a Lamborghini, and it's probably going to be more in the distance than when I say, well, I want this... Uh, this Toyota 4Runner uh, off-road, I'm living in partially rural country and it's more practical for me and for long distance. So in, in a sense, um, I mean, we know that, but uh, how can one learn, well, may, maybe it's purposeful for me to be uh, a decorative designer instead of a lawyer. H how do we know with our conditioning, yo, you know, lawyer, safe paychecks, a lot of money, of course, a, a, lot, of, a lot of material safety is there, and the other one is creational, and you have to have faith. Um, how, how can people uh, trust more that resonance, that, hey, your purpose might be, a, be an interior a decorative designer, mm -hmm. because that's actually where your heart sings, and being a lawyer, your heart doesn't sing. Mm -hmm. How do you decipher, okay, let's, let's choose to go left, even if everybody's going right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think you answered it as you were speaking. Okay. Like, when your heart sings, when you feel that happiness, that strong desire, that's guiding you on your path. So when you choose a path with the heart, you give your life meaning. You can go after all the Lamborghinis you want, but if you don't really desire them from your heart, they're not going to fulfill that state of happiness that you're trying to achieve. You're going to feel empty inside. 
right? All these possessions are going to feel meaningless if they're not connected to a purpose that you're having. So the more we know ourselves, which really means the more we feel ourselves, the more we become aware of ourselves, the more we understand our thoughts and our intuition, the more we know ourselves as an actual experience, the more we discover the inner guidance. And the heart is a huge part of the inner guidance. In that heart we feel desire, we feel the most important desire, the reason for being here. We feel this deep connection to who we are. Now the challenge that people have is connecting into that inner knowing. A lot of times we're up here in our heads, and so we're always listening to the stories and the thoughts and what the television tells us, what our friends tell us, what our parents told us, right? the cars that we should desire, the jobs that we should choose. We have to really quiet down this up here because this is just memory-based conditioning. It's the past speaking to us with an understanding that we heard from others or that we created for ourselves in the past. By coming down from our head into our heart, we begin to create a present moment state of an experience. And in that present moment state, we begin to understand more of who I am, which is different than that psychological conditioning that we receive through the senses. So you really have to know yourself, and you most likely have to make that a practice. So every day, connect within. My advice is don't look for intellectual answers. Instead, look for a feeling. A feeling of knowing who you are. Because it's very easy to get trapped up here, always looking for answers or like, I want to channel my higher self, Lincoln, and I'm up here and it's not talking to me. And I say, well, what does the higher self actually teach you? It teaches you go into your heart. And when your heart opens, then the brain will open in response. But if you're not in your heart, then what you're hearing in your head are just your own thoughts. So we really have to go deeper into ourselves, our deeper brain, our hearts, actually our, our second brain. I consider it our primary brain. It's our most important form of intelligence. So we go into that center that's at the, the center of our being, and there we discover the inner guidance, there we discover our purpose, there we discover how we want to live. And when you align with that desire and express yourself in a way to manifest it, you're putting all of your soul's energy into that creation. So you're going to get that car, you're going to get that job, you're going to get whatever you want in a much more effective way because you're using your soul's creative energy rather than just using your limited human energy. So <clears throat> before we go into part two, um, uh, we, uh, so the overall message with your service to the planet, to the people, if you can put that into, I don't know, four minutes? Yeah, sure. Roughly. What would, what would you give to the people? And also don't forget to mention your website and mm -hmm. your channel. Okay. <clears throat> um, so the message for humanity, the higher self message is live from your heart and try to embody your heart in all the different ways that you live. So when you're consciously feeling your heart, it produces a quality of vibration. It feels like peace, it feels like happiness, it feels like love, it feels like oneness. The vibration that you're feeling is going to determine how you interpret your present moment. So the way you interpret your life and anything happening to you or any forms in your environment are based upon your vibration at that moment. So if we're aware of our heart, we're actually inviting into our experience the vibration of blissful love and oneness. When we're feeling that heart energy and we communicate from that state, we're now shaping the universe in alignment with this spiritual heart love. Even if you can't really feel it, even if it's hard to feel your heart, it's important to try to keep your awareness here in a very relaxed way, and you definitely will awaken it. You can think of your heart like a seed. You just have to water it. You just have to nurture it. It might take a little while for the seed to sprout, but because you're watering it and nurturing it with your time and your attention, it is going to take shape. It is going to come into your life. Uh, so try to live from your heart. Know who you are. Don't go against yourself. The world's going to tell you who to be and how to think, and we see that more than any time before in our lives right now. Right? The whole world's trying to tell you who you are, and you're never going to be happy if you're living another person's version of yourself. So we have to go beyond our memory-based conditioning, beyond the voices of the world, connect into our hearts and really know who we are, and then have the courage and the strength to live that heart-centered expression in your life. When you do that, you're going to see all these synchronicities in your life. What you desire is going to come into your life with less effort. You're going to have connections. You're going to be surprised by all the things you magnetically attract. Because truly, that heart is the energy of oneness. So it's going to bring to you 
that which you desire and that which serves your overall awakening. Yeah, so live from your heart as best you can, feeling it, that's all you need to do. And as you're in that vibration, you'll notice how you think changes, how you act changes, what you believe about life changes, and the events that happen to you start changing. So it's really like a type of frequency mastery that you're working with. So your website and your YouTube channel. Okay, my website's channelhigherself.com and my YouTube channel is channelhigherself.